well, today we don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have it. <laughs> and uh... and as you pointed out, Sebastian, uh, the official guidelines from uh, Microsoft to hosting companies is not to use it today because it's useless. It's useless. It's... Yes. So it's the answer. Well, but I don't know if it's really the issue because if a hoster just handles medium trust and we say to the user yeah the hoster is in fault and the server will say well I use medium trust screw you you don't want to use it that's the issue of your tool which doesn't handle medium trust even if it's not the recommended way yeah so but yeah so what we would be saying to users is go to a Hosting yeah, hosting so company. today we have two libraries which provide which um, have the issue. So the what was it? Log for net? Yes. Log for net and Fluent and Hibernate. And it's an open bug on Fluent and Hibernate and the guy from Fluent and Hibernate closed it saying I don't have I have time for this. I won't fix it. Who cares? So if people really complain, they can load log for net, download Flint and Hibernate, fix it, use it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we did it for some other assembly, so. Oh, you no. can stay on uh, on on five. Mm, yes. Use Azure website. Let's vote on that. Uh, steering committee members, uh, please say um, plus one to remove medium trust support or minus one if you're against it. So Sebastian doesn't vote. That's type Miss Matudan. <laughs> That's not an int. That's a good one, Zoltan. <laughs> uh, right. Do you need more information? If you need more information, ask questions. Uh, maybe they need to listen to your question. Okay, so we are voting on whether we keep medium trust support or not. Sipke is not here. Piotr is here. So Why I think the Sipke question. Not here? Uh, is Sipke really not here? Isn't he in, uh, I don't know, in Brad's Brad office? Or... Yeah, I see him. I'll, I'll make sure he gets in. Please, thanks. Uh, I don't necessarily understand what medium <laughs> support. So Nick, what do you think? You he took your your spot. So what what will be your hint for Ilan? Uh, I drop it. So um, Ilan. <laughs> so Ilan, let, let me explain what, what it is in a, in a in a few sentences. Uh, medium trust is a feature that ASP.NET has or had because it's not really supported anymore. Wow. Well, it's not supported, but uh, it worked. Um, that uh, set up what looked like a lower security profile for hosting companies so that they could restrict what the website is able to do in their environment. Problem is, it's largely inefficient, which is something that Microsoft is, uh, is saying overtly now. They're saying, don't use it, it's, it's useless, it's, a, it's an illusion of security, but it's actually not protecting anything. Uh, so they are recommending not to use it. But there is a perception, the perception that it's useful is still there. So uh, there are a few users who think that medium trust is a good thing and prefer to... And some hosters still use it, and they tend to be the cheaper ones. How do we use it? 
meaning it's available, it's part of uh, core. So when you when you get a, a hosting plan with a hosting company, um, some of those plans come with that level of yeah. It's mainly a constraint. Uh, it's not. It's probably not something that any user would ask for, because it's yeah. it's more meant to protect the hoster than to protect the the, uh, the site admin. Mm -hmm. um, but some hosters are still uh, proposing plans with that option. And, right. Uh, so there you, okay. So we 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 would be unable to run on those uh, on those hosters. Do we have any idea how many sites we currently run on those uh, hosters? Yeah. And we have any idea who those hosters are? Uh, I think. Could they propose? ASP could they discount GoDaddy? Uh... So that, but that's just a feature of the plan. It's not necessarily yes. the only plan in which Orchard could be hosted. Then. Oh yeah, there, there is plenty of choice, including. Uh, Inexpensive plans where you get full trust. Yeah. Um, Azure runs full trust. Um, and the thing is, we lost medium trust compatibility with 1.6, which was kind of an accident. Uh, and how many how many people did complain about it? One. One. So that that pretty much tells you how important it is. I think. How many users do we have? All right, so so my vote goes to dropping it based on the information provided. Sipko? Yeah, uh, so the, the question is about um, whether to drop support for full uh, medium trust. Yes. Uh, OK, so um, yeah, I, I'm just I'm wondering if we uh, drop it, uh, why do we have to drop it? I'm sorry, I'm late. I, I, I forgot. Because it's uh, it's expensive to maintain for uh, a result that it, I that, think is not worth the, it's not the trouble. Dropping it is that the one point six doesn't work anymore in medium trust. Question is, do we want to re-include it or not? <laughs> because it has yeah. been dropped. But if if it's too um, difficult to maintain or too expensive, I I, I never use medium trust so. And and like Bertrand uh, says, if it's if nobody complained about it, why keep it? So I would vote to uh, drop it. And the main argument for, from Bertrand was that uh, the ASP.NET team says it's a bad solution. It's no more a recommended solution to use Median, median Trust. Oh, then that's that that's even better. Then it's uh, I would vote for, uh, to to drop it even more than. If they don't support yeah, it, they recommend against it. Then. The, well, yeah, yes. and it add, adds a lot of complexity, not only to the core, but to the uh, um, module for the module developer. So they have to be aware that the module can be run, for example, in a medium yes. trust. So. And it, it degrades performance as well. Oh, yeah, okay. so. And there is some code that we could actually get rid of. Yeah, and also add, like, I remove. And there is a commented code which is um, checking, well, adding a compilation uh, compilation flag with a version number so that you can write a module and do some dash if with the original version and say if it's in this version, use this line or this version, use this line for breaking changes. So you could have a module which will be dynamically compiled using the current original version. Some, you know. Yeah. So there is a question in chat. What about high trust? I, I think it should work in high trust, but it's it's the same thing. It's uh, it's pretty much useless. Um, using high trust is just as illusory as using medium trust is. So to summarize the recommendation, they say don't use uh, partial trust, like yeah. any of those profiles, yes. but use different. Uh, um, how do they call it? Uh, what do you say? Mitigations. No, they say use different accounts, not accounts. You know, uh, oh. system users for uh, wow, read the <laughs> yeah. Uh, for the abdomens. 
Yes, for the app domain, use a speci use different uh, yeah users for each app domain, and handle the rights on this user. Yeah, the you know a lot of uh, things that can be done using setting up users on uh, in IIS. I think we, we have the user for uh, um, the app domain. And, uh, other user for, uh, for example, like a certain path. Uh, so there is a different, lot of different ways, and medium trust and those other things are not. Yeah. It was really hard to, to yeah. understand. It was not just me. It was dropping all the time. But uh, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Whatever. The, well, yeah. The the official recommendations from Microsoft are are easy. Fine, we, we know how to point to them. So, uh, what's your vote, Piotr? Yeah, mm, I would vote to drop it. So that's four votes, four, and uh, one neutral vote. Okay. You're dropping it. Um, one of the well, yeah, yeah, another topic I had was uh, those of you who uh, subscribe to the mailing list um, have seen um, what happened this weekend, which is that uh, this guy named Jason um, a, a, a series of messages actually that was uh, let's say. Uh, controversial and sometimes a little hard to follow actually um, and I, I wanted to say a few words about that uh, there, there have there have been some reactions uh, to his messages that I didn't quite like like and I actually sent a few emails to the authors um, and there's been calls for uh, moderation on this mailing list uh, so we'll talk about that uh, after I'm done with uh, talking about Jason and what he had to say, um, I think it's we, sh we should remain open to uh, any suggestions. Um, and I didn't agree with what he had to say, but I like that he was able to say it. Um, and some of the reactions to what he was saying were quite aggressive and. Uh, I, I really didn't like the way the, the rest of the list reacted to, to what he had to say. Uh, and actually his intentions were, were good, so there was really no reason to uh, shut him down so violently. So um, I'd like to ask people to be, I don't know, a little more you know, uh, thoughtful about what they're writing and, uh, uh, you know, yeah. So even if what he had to say wasn't wasn't essential, or I mean, that's no reason to, uh, to react like that. Uh, that's what I had to say. Um, yeah, his English was very poor, but it was. He is English. He's English. Well, it it was. Listen, I think I I agree I with think, you to I I agree with you up to a point. I think with these discussions, they are open and they're open for a reason. Um, not that they shouldn't have some type of moderation, as I think that has been pointed out, to um, make sure that the appropriate conversation or that the postings are appropriate for the community. Mm -hmm. um, but that the community is also, as you generally point out, needs to um, police itself. Um, yeah, so sh here's what I think should have happened. Uh, I don't think that his message was actually appropriate for the mailing list. The mailing list should be more about announcements and, you know, more exceptional stuff. It should remain relatively low traffic. I think we should have redirected it from the start to the forums. That was the proper place to have this discussion. It's easier for people to ignore it. Uh, and uh, that I think that's where it, where it should happen. So I... Let's talk about mailing list moderation. I don't think we should moderate it, but we should uh, act fast when something like that happens to redirect it to the forums. 
I think it should not be redirected to the forums because it's a mailing list and people want to discuss on that and it's open for them to post comments and discussions. If we just want people to have newsletter, let's make a newsletter and have a mailing list too. So if they just want to have an answer on Orchard from the official uh, stream, let's make a newsletter. And if they want to, and if they want a, the mailing list, let's use a mailing list. That's two different purposes. And yes, yeah. mailing list can be crap sometimes. It's, yeah. You, so do we need do we need that mailing list at all? Is it useful? In lieu of having anything else right now, yes. Okay. We have the forum, as you said. But the mailing list is a mailing list, so it's not about moderating it. It's about, yeah, it's there. Okay, any other opinions on whether we should moderate that mailing list? Actually, I'm not sure that technically we can moderate and, it yeah. because it's, uh, it, it, we are not hosting it. It's, uh, uh, it's being provided uh, to us. Uh, um, ideally, there should be a feature, and it can be done with certain things, uh, with certain mailing lists, is that if you want to unsubscribe to a particular thread, meaning you don't unsubscribe from the list, but you unsubscribe for that conversation, so for example, a conversation like that that gets a little bit out of control or unwieldy, yeah, well, you, you, can, know, you can all, do that. All email, cli email clients have, uh, have features to do that, too. You can ignore a conversation, and it's one click in most uh, email clients. The problem is we don't expose that as a one-click solution in the, in the email. <laughs> Don't need nor, to. nor do we expose how to unsubscribe in the email. I think that was also an important. We, we don't need to. And you know, there are also technical problems, which is that I, I actually asked if we could have, uh, you know, a footer in all uh, all messages with tools to unsubscribe or you know that sort of thing, uh, ignore conversations. But the, the, there are technical issues that prevent it. Um, it interacts with the encoding of the of the messages. I, I won't go into too much details, but it won't work. So, uh, try so in, lieu, yeah. in lieu of having a better solution, we should move on. For um, yeah, but newsletter, uh, we actually need uh, newsletter push only and uh, for a no yeah. mailing list. So you're going back on what you said. No, I'm saying if we have a mailing list, I don't want to moderate it. I agree. I don't think it should be moderated. Yeah, so but it can it, it can stay here, and people it, are allowed to subscribe or unsubscribe. It's free discussion. I don't care. Okay. Um, so the what we can do is either um, really moderate it. Yeah. We can police it some somewhat to an extent by saying, uh, "Yeah, please take this discussion to France. And we need to push information to some people who want to be a, a, um, aware of news about our channel. And this is more about a newsletter. It is safe. Because people don't subscribe to the Codeplex project or don't subscribe on the Twitter account. So they don't know that there is a new version or security issue and things like that. But they might want to, be, to know the that's major events. That's pretty much all it's been used for. Uh, what happened this weekend was exciting. Yeah. yeah but those people who don't want to be bothered by those discussions and still wants to know about Orchard. Yeah, so it seems like people want something more like a newsletter. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if we want to avoid the full, the full issue, we can say, okay, no more or let's keep the mailing list, but then there might be trash on it. There is a forum discussion, which is safe, and there is a newsletter if you just want to to get notification about news of our child without the... So does it mean that we would actually prevent people from sending to the, to the mailing list? Uh, um, I, don't think I was thinking about go, having a newsletter, an official newsletter instead of using the mailing list actually. So maybe the, I, I, my suggestion right. would be we keep it and we let it like that or we stop it. It's called our child discuss. So. It's pretty we clear that it's for discussion. So. We can we can keep it and just send an, 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 a message to it saying now the official ways well the recommended ways of okay. interacting are the forum or in subscribing to a newsletter only. Okay, let's let's keep it as it is for now. Uh, mm -hmm. Next time something happens, we will we'll try to gently uh, direct it to forums if if we think it's becoming inappropriate.
Okay, let's keep it this way for now. Um, and there was his uh, his actual point, which was that uh, our child was in need of more marketing and less engineering speech. Um, and I'd like to, to know what people think about that, how people feel about that. Uh, so, I mean, it, it made sense in the beginning of our child that we were talking primarily to engineers because what we needed was adoption by by developers uh, so that we could have, uh, you know, uh, lots of modules and themes uh, developed. But I think we've reached that point where um, talking directly to end users uh, is something that we, we should do more. Um, so that, that part, I think, made sense. So what, what, what do you guys think? And in particular, I'd like to know what Ilan thinks about that. I mean, I, I, that's something that I've been calling for for a while now. And um, you know, I'm working towards that goal. I like the fact that Sebastian thinks that's giggles and... Yeah, no, no, it's like, uh, yes, do it. No, I mean... It... Okay, so how do we do it? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a plan. I'm working on a plan that will benefit the community in order to do it. Um, so, it, of, it, yeah. It, it, yeah, we don't have the, the big font on the home page saying this is the best... Uh, ASP.NET CMS on the market. Ever. <laughs> Ever. Ever. And I'm quoting some other ASP.NET CMS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I found it last week. It was funny. Um, yeah, yeah I, think, we don't... I think we need to remain humble in our communication. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, realistic. There is no best CMS on ASP.NET. Um, but yes, the, the, the website is ugly. There is no, we don't care about yeah, the visibility of the project. We don't even work on, on the SEO of the, of the website. Uh, and when I say we don't even work, we don't even fix the, the obvious issues. Uh, so we have done nothing on that right now. Uh, if we could do something, I would wait for 1.7 just to have stuff that will be advertisable well that yeah that gives us time to uh, to prepare mm -hmm. which also brings up a good question is what is 1.7 we haven't really spoken about that in two weeks um, yeah we'll talk about that uh, as well uh, okay. before we do uh, Questions from the chat. Who is the target of our child? Software engineers, website developers, or website owners? Well, all of those, uh, which is which is part of the problem. You need to talk to those very different populations, but you need to talk to them all. Is that Camille? I, is that Camille? I used to call them website website professionals. Yes, yeah. like they can be designer, they can be website developers, they can be website editors. So I. It's like a big bucket where I put them all, website developers in general. And they are all not primary users, but it's like some people will have all those uh, those um, competencies and there will be only one guy doing everything, but there might be some teams where they can all like Orchard because it is Orchard designers, editors, and developers. That's right. It's an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So... That, that's for for me from, from my point of view the the target audience website uh, website professionals in general. Um, Where, whereas we could say that uh, WordPress you could take only a user and it could be a potential uh, target. It's not the case for Orchard. I don't I think. I so. I no, I disagree. I think um, I think WordPress is a good example of them as well. Yeah, no, I mean. I, I get with, your point, but I'm just I'm okay. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm tracking I'm also, tracking back that it could it is it is in and of itself a product that an yeah. end user could use, but not Orchard, not yet. Yeah, and so, and in order yeah, for that's... Orchard and in order for Orchard to succeed in 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 a greater ecosystem of of there being WordPresses out there and Drupal for example and Joomla, 
we need to and we are moving in that direction and therefore we need to speak to those audiences today. Not get to those audiences today, but we need to appeal to them because if we don't start appealing broadly, the impression will be from the beginning that it's not accessible. Okay. Yeah, and another remark here in chat is backend usability must be improved for content managers. Uh, there is a, a thread about that. Um, uh, one of the 1.7 1. 1. threads uh, is about that. Um, how do we convince our studio clients that we are using our chart for the site versus their run of the mill? WordPress folks. I don't know. There is the PHP versus ASP.NET uh, issue in there as well. Um, the answer to that. There is the dynamic content management way of thinking instead of place content management, meaning that the editor will create content items and won't have to give his point on where it has to be displayed. If they want to do that, that's the same argument between Drupal and WordPress. If you're more in favor of Drupal, then go to Orchard or go to Drupal. <laughs> but that's that's the way I would. Yeah, it's a real type. CMS. WordPress isn't. In WordPress, you have post mm -hmm. types and you can have like fake content types. They all have a body. And yeah, so look, I think there's various people in the community right now that are trying to push this type of agenda forward. Um, I think it's great. The more people that do that, the better, so that it sh it has more content around why Orchard out there besides the Orchard Project that clearly we all realize is not the brand we want to push forward. Um, I mean, Camille is, is, is mentioning one in the chat of something that she's doing. The show Orchard guys are doing that. Um, I, I hope that Harvest will also be another platform to do that, to, to gain um, usership and interest. Um, so I think we're all moving in the right direction. And I think to Sebastian's point, 1.7 could be one of those um, packages that will allow us to really take that next step. And I hope that's a segue for... Uh, Okay, so we have work to do. Um, um, yeah, and uh, in the in that whole marketing reorganization of the site, etc., uh, we should also uh, take into account what's called our chat TV today, which is just a collection of videos. Uh, the way we we organize. Um, contents of that sort that is supposed to be very accessible because it's video. Um, I don't know how we how we do that if we if we spread video contents more liberally around the site or if we keep it like it is on a single page. Um, that's that's an, another thing to think about. Um, I want to uh, talk about a more uh, technical topic, which is um, that a few core modules uh, and uh, would-be core modules that are being developed currently uh, could benefit from using uh, a few useful jQuery plugins. We are already using nested sortable, for example. Uh, there is another one called uh, Tagit, uh, which is being used in a in a fork of taxonomies that is pretty cool and that uh, personally I would like to, to see uh, uh, becoming part of the official taxonomies module. Um, so what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that uh, I, I want us to discuss whether we should add some, uh, some libraries to the Orchard jQuery module or if we should have a new module for um, other jQuery plugins. Uh, or if they should remain as they are today, including uh, included by the module that uses them. But in the case of nested sortable, for example, we are just putting the nested sortable scripts in the module and referencing it directly, which means that if you have two parts that are both using it, uh, you'll start having some nasty 
conflicts and double inclusions of the script. Um, so I, I think those scripts should be manifest based so that they can be required instead of included. Um, what what do you think about that? Uh, I, I would prefer to have those plugins in the orchard.jQuery module personally. I would prefer to have them separate and okay, okay to use a manifest so they don't conflict. So why separate? Uh, That's one more. Because I, I don't want to have so many references to other utility modules. I don't like utility modules. Yeah, but you're creating one more by separating them. Uh, no, I'm just encapsulating. I'm not creating a utility module. So I'm just, it's just there is a module and it has all the the assets it needs. Oh, so you would you would require, but still do it in the module. yeah. So, so that I, means hold on. That means that I need to take a reference to uh, no. the navigation module if I want to use no. nested sortable. No, 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 no. <laughs> Each of them use require, and I expect that if the two of them you call their own require, only one will be used. But certain jQuery plugins, they can be reused by other modules like Tagit. Um, would it make sense to have that as part of the jQuery module as well, instead of a separate module? To, uh, no, no. Keep the number of modules at a minimum. It could be in the jQuery. So, well, if it was in jQuery, the requirement would be that we just put stuff that core modules use. Yes, yes. exactly. Then I would be okay. So in the case of nested sortable, that means it that will we be should okay. have nested yeah. sortable in our chart object, right? But then, let's say that the navigation doesn't use nested sortable anymore. There is a new one, much better. So do we remove nested sortable from jQuery? And because it's a core module, people might depend on that and say. No, I think we would need to leave it there. I didn't get you. What's what the, you the better? I, I think what, we, should what, we, should, we should leave it there in that case. One of the issues that. Yeah, well, it's a hypothetical issue. Hypothetical with higher probabilities, so. I, yeah, but. Uh, so you mentioned the better um, solution, the sortable. What's that? Better solution to sortable? The two nested sortable. You're saying mean, that maybe one changes. day, no, maybe one day it's an example. Uh, like tag, tag it or whatever, maybe we autocomplete because we also use the complete some portions. Maybe tomorrow jQuery will do its own dedicated one in jQuery UI or whatever, and we want to use it instead. Or jQuery plugins, there are new ones every day, and we found them, we find them every day better on new ones, so that's the. And to prevent this risk, having every, each module use their own assets, there is no risk. They can change as they want. Yeah, and so that, that's a good point. So, but mm. we, but at the same time, uh, there are multiple modules using the same. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's why I. Plugins. That's why I recommended that, as uh, Bertrand was suggesting, to use a require instead of strict script include, and uh, if each of those modules use the same jQuery plugin and do a manifest also. And the require is the same. Maybe. I have okay. to check it. So to summarize, we would have a recommendation, which is that if you use a plugin that is not your script, but a, a plugin that you took from somewhere, you would, you would require it, not include it. Yes. And uh, we would have to be more precise than that. We would have to say, okay, use the file name mm -hmm. as the, the, the script name, for example. Yes. Without version. Mm -hmm. okay. This will be a solution. Yeah, I'm okay with it. I think technically it works. Uh, I, I didn't think about I didn't think that uh, about it, actually. So yeah, that, that works. Uh, we have to test it. Maybe it won't work. And if it doesn't work, we can use your, your uh, recommendation. Okay. 
Um, yeah, Nick, I, I don't really buy that argument. Uh, what? What? That uh, to him, Orchard jQuery is just for jQuery core, jQuery and jQuery UI. Where jQuery UI is not jQuery core, you could you could argue. And, uh, um, Orchard jQuery could be for jQuery plugins, you know. Um, Maybe you should also include the version in the require because I don't, I don't know if you, use it. you should use the version in the require. Yeah, yeah, well, but actually, you don't, you don't want make... to you don't want to include two okay. versions of the same. No, but plugin. actually, we can define the version and the require, so it's, it's it should be okay. It should work. So, like, I would I want to test to to test if wow, oh, yeah, see those issues also. Well, this is the same issue. We just put everything in the jQuery because then we upgrade to a new version, and all the dependent modules will say, "Hey, I I don't want this version," like we did when we um, 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 increased the jQuery UI version. It broke everything. So, I just think it's going to be a bit more. I just think it's going to introduce a bit more pain and upgrade issues when we go forward. Um, Putting them into the jQuery library, uh, jQuery uh, module. I think um, oh, there, there are there are great issues in any case. Uh, there, there are always going to be some. I'm not I'm not saying that there aren't. I'm just saying that I think that we're going to end up lending ourselves to much bigger issues um, going forward. Let's try with a simple solution right. first. We can change it. Let's try simple, and I'm not even sure we'll face any problem which are that. The same, the, which is that the same script will be called by two different parts. So let's all, also just see one example of this happening. But you must have some. And okay. Let's see. Okay. Um, we have a demo today. Uh, Brett, are you ready to demo? Well, at least one yeah, demo. Sure. One demo that I know of. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, go ahead. Do, do you have enough battery? Yeah, we're good. OK. OK, everyone see? No. Yes. Yes, OK. So uh, Internet Explorer. Four, four to inch screen. Yeah, Internet Explorer, I'm signed into the dashboard. And then here in Chrome, I'm not. So it's the same site, Chrome, I'm signed out. One, one second, wait, we are, we are not all seeing it. I can't see it yet. It's like uh, 3,000 pixels wide and 10,000. <laughs> yeah, it's a retina display. <laughs> Is it not usable? It's a retina display, so that's how. That's why we see it like that? OK. I, I can't see it at all. It's loading. Really? It's really big. Now I see it partially. Yeah, I see it now. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't. I mean, I could try changing the resolution. Uh, For yeah. The price you paid. Uh, be a shame. That's, that's fine. We see it now. Hang on. Is that better? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Is that better? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, just a general a generic 1.6. Uh, as I said in Chrome, I'm signed out because if you know when you're signed in, uh, you bypass cache, and we don't want to do that for this demo. So here's the demo. Uh, the demo is when you when you change a menu, for example, um, the cache doesn't know you've done that. So what happens is you've got this output cache, which is great. So if I evict here, um, if, if I refresh on the cache, it just reloaded it and recached it. Sebastian's given this demo many, many times. So now it's cached. When I hit refresh, very, very fast. Um, the issue is change when you change things within the page, not the page itself, but let's say. Why, why don't you talk to me? I what have a mean? solution. I have the best solution. I hope you took this one. What? <laughs> Go on. I'll, I'll tell you if, if it's not the, the, the solution I have in mind. 
All right, well, let's say you change this menu. So we're going to do that. We're going to go under um, Navigation, Home. I'm going to go ahead and change this menu to be uh, Home, Home Not Updating. Home, uh, home not updating. All right, so we'll hit save here, and what happens is it doesn't change here because it's still in the cache, because this output cache is still is still loaded. So unless I manually evict it, it doesn't change. So um, if I evict here, and I reload, of course, there's the new menu. So what I did was I added a setting down here. This is the new feature. Evict all on publish. Okay, it's good. Okay. But it's good. So you have some more work to do. I will tell you what to do, and you will improve it. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Let me let me finish the demo. Yeah, so yeah, you go, go. See. Just just so you're hundred percent sure I'm doing the right thing. Okay. So let's go back to navigation. I'm going to reset it to just home. And let me um, evict it. So I'll evict it, and now I'll hit refresh. Okay. So now we're back to re we're reset. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my new feature that I added, evict all pages on publish, and hit save. So now when I go to navigation and I change it, um, hang on. Yeah, let me just make sure the... Let me make sure the ca it's it's in cache. Okay, so it's in cache. It's loading. We're going to go change it now. I'm going to change this home to be home auto update and hit save. What that did was it automatically evicted it. So it's evicted. And now without doing anything, I hit cache and I get the updated version. That's it for the demo. I mean, I could talk about how I did it or what, but I'm, I'm really curious, Sebastian, to hear like what I yeah, didn't I, do. I have a better solution, so it's, but this is very nice because we don't have it today. I have a better design for a better solution. And okay. uh, so, D, you see it's very simple, but wow. Um, so today, cache is indexed by URL. Actually, it's URL plus query string plus context, optional context, okay? So you need to match the URL, we'll say, to invalid the cache. Okay, so if you publish a content item, it, it's just for the content item display detail. And here, this content item, this menu, it was not a match for the auto route, so it didn't update it. So the solution, the optimal solution, so that, for instance, you change a widget, which is only on two pages, it will evict those two pages and not the other ones. You agree with this is the best solution ever? To do that, it's just that when you will um, build the page, you intercept all the calls to, for instance, content manager or shape displaying, and it's generating like a, a list of tags, like content item ID, shape ID, things like that. Okay, and instead of having the cache entries indexed by URL, they're indexed by they are also indexed by uh, those tags like content item IDs. So on the page. You can relate to all the content item IDs which were used, like widgets, con uh, everything, menu, anything. And uh, then when you change some content, you go look and in you go do a search by index, which is a content item ID, like you did, but instead of evict all on a published item, you just look for the pages in the cache with this tag. And again, a tag can be anything. So then you can evict exactly the pages that use this tag. So you're maintaining a dynamic um, index of yeah, index of, of cache entries. Yes, it's it's very cheap. And the nice thing is also that the all the reverse proxies will understand that. So you can when you push uh, some metadata and data, add more information about all the tags that were part of this thing. So next time there is a request, you can also evict specific pages from the reverse proxy with that. They handle that things, the, the, the tags uh, mechanism. That will that will be very nice. Next step. So I expect. Yeah, to get... I realize. 
Yeah, yeah, I realized that the way I, I, I did it, uh, the thing is if you have thousands of pages, uh, this will evict all of them because it doesn't know which ones it should have. Well, and it's oh. even, but it's still better than today because if you want, you can do it. It's just optional. So right. people are aware of, about the, the result. But yes, next step is to be able to evict only the pages which use specific uh, content item IDs. Yeah. Or yeah. any tag, whatever. That's why I say it can be anything. It can be a content item. It can be, we don't know. It can also be related to a user. So you could have also indexed by user every cached page. So you just invalidate for a specific user. I don't know. It's just a, or a culture. It's a tag. Okay. So. Okay. Sounds good. It sounds more complicated than what I did. Yeah, but, but this one is not, well, that's, it's better than, yeah. that's why it's not there also because it's, yeah, there's some work to do. That's great. But this is the optimal solution in my mind. Yeah, I agree. OK. That's pretty much it. So you send a pull request? Thanks. Sure. Uh, I'd be happy to. I will do it. Thank you. Thanks. The reason why I, need, the reason why I needed it was because, uh, you know, Another feature I demoed six months ago, we've got this just web farm issue where when you um, when something changes in the orchard dash, the other nodes in the farm don't know about it. So we have to uh, signal them when that happens. And so that module is a completely separate module that's uh, I haven't documented it enough yet to publish it, but um, maybe others could, could use it. It's on CodePlex now. But the idea is that when this fires, that will fire as well. When the evict, uh, the auto evict fires, it will also fire on all the all the nodes in the farm. Yeah, there was an article or a blog post this morning about uh, doing same kind of stuff on Azure. Actually. Yeah. So this is the signal, and also using memcache for the instead of syscache for the database. This is also a nice uh, module, but it will be nice to have a complete. Uh, so I have this module and also how to install memcache on a node. Because the Azure cache is just uses the same API as memcache. So you can use the same article to put your uh, DB cache inside a specific node. OK. Uh, do we have any other demos today? Yours? No, unfortunately, not this week. Uh, for non technical reasons, uh, I can't show it this week. OK. Z Zoltan mentioned. Uh, yeah, Zoltan. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let me share my screen. Uh, first, all right, here it is. So uh, during the last week, I created a new module. It's called External Pages. Uh, it so be... I saw it. It's, really? it's not loading yet. So done. Okay. Your screen. Uh, oh yeah, but uh, I, I saw it on the gallery. It's commenting. I, I wanted to know what was the difference with chapters. Uh, and I think we are speaking about something different. Uh, this is not released in the gallery yet. OK, so I saw something in the gallery from you. I thought it was that. The pages, the hierarchical pages. Oh, uh, that's fun. All right. So yeah, that's a, that's a different matter. Uh, this is an unreleased module yet. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Cool. I can. So, Generally, this would be about aggregating external content. What currently it does, it does is aggregating markdown pages from a Bitbucket repository. So the aim is more or less what uh, Bertrand has thought with uh, Orchard with, uh, the web page driving the Orchard documentation side, but that's an Orchard module. So uh, here it is. Uh, on that, can you have? Can yeah. you wait just a few seconds? I don't know if I'm the only one, but I can't see it. All right. So uh, I'm not moving. <laughs> I'm not moving. It should load. Uh, uh, please yeah. say something. When you All right. So that's the admin screen. Uh, basically, you can you can configure a repository access here. So it should be a Bitbucket repository because it uses the Bitbucket API. Uh, yeah, account name and slug are uh, self-explanatory. It can use public or private repositories as, as well. But uh, yeah, 
private repositories would be maybe pointless. Uh, this is just for a case if you want to open up part of a private repository as such a kind of a documentation site or a, like a wiki or something like that. And uh, you can configure mappings between the file paths inside the repository and between the URLs uh, on the Orchard site. So basically, you can have multiple sections or multiple um, areas saved in the repository that would correspond to multiple entry points on the Orchard side. Um, what I have here is just a very simple repository. So uh, the content here, it has an index page and one folder with two additional pages, one index and one with an arbitrary name. And here it is what is generated from it. So this is the index page. You can see it's under the URL I've defined um, on the administration UI. Uh, links work as expected. So uh, if there is an index, index.md file in the root of a folder, it works like, like it is with HTML files on servers. So uh, you, you don't need to use the file path, the full file path. You, you can also only use the folder path. And, uh, and yeah, it parses out uh, titles to you. So this is a title uh, defined as a, as a title section in the, in the markdown page. So with the markdown uh, syntax, it's really parsed out and used as, as a title. So this is the title bar. And the origin of the title in the content is, is hidden or, or is, is, uh, is cleared. Uh, it periodically checks the repository, um, but you can also repopulate the whole local content set uh, with this click. So it will load uh, all the files from this, from this folder, from these folders specified here. Uh, but if you don't do that, it will periodically check uh, with bucket for changes and pull them in. So uh, that's the module. Uh, and we at the Orchard Hungary site, we use for Orchard training materials because uh, we, have, we have compiled quite a few page pages regarding Orchard training. And we will open those up as open source, so kind of an open source, source knowledge base, and put them on the Orchard Hungary site. Uh, well, that's the module. Uh, anybody has any questions or feedback? Remarks. remarks? And I will answer a Bertrand question with my remark. Um, so don't use the Beach Bucket API, use the Git itself. And hmm. if you don't know how to do that, just look at Kudu project, which is the open source implementation of the Git publish from Azure websites, which can handle Codeplex, Bitbucket, uh, GitHub, so and it's open source, so you can use their own implementation. Otherwise, uh, sorry, what was the name? Kudu, K-U-D-U-U. It's on GitHub. I I will give you the link to that. Um, so right. what they are doing is that they just point to a to a repository wherever it is, and it will clone it locally using a real clone. And uh, and they also integrate authentication with GitHub Codeplex and Bitbucket, the real authentication. And uh, one of the nice things that I don't think you have here is that um, all those sites support pushing. Also, uh, so you, when you change something on GitHub, for example, uh, it gets picked up automatically uh, by the site. So you don't have to, uh, to push a button to uh, repopulate. But it's very nice. That's, that's very nice work. I really like it. You yeah, guys continue you. to uh, to push the limits, and that's great. Yeah, you should stop someday and start being good soldiers and do what we ask you to do. What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You don't have to be. <laughs> it, it was very complimentary. Uh, Sebastian, as usual, makes an offhanded remark, but it, yeah. he meant it in a complimentary way. 
Did I? Oh, what? I missed it. I, I don't know whether it's cool that I didn't understand it. No, it's recorded. Ask Benedict. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's for the better. We'll, we'll analyze the video <laughs> tomorrow. Um, um, I want to talk briefly about uh, 1.7. Um, there is a lot of activity on some of the threads. Uh, on some other threads, less so. But in particular, the uh, workflow thread is very active, which kind of confirms what we already knew, which is that uh, that's a feature that people really want. Um, so if you haven't already, take a look at those threads and uh, please participate if you can, uh, contribute if you can. They're, they're not that easy to find. Um, can we put something on the... Give me one the, second. I give you all the links. Yeah, there is an index post. Uh, that's what well, you are going to... Uh, no. Know. No. no. Oh, okay, so let well, me. Is, I, I know that Sebastian's part. very good at answering for Bertrand and Bertrand for answering for Sebastian, but I don't think either one of you are good for answering for me. So that what I was going to say is maybe on the Orchard Project site, which I know has its issues, we've clearly talked about that. Could there be something there where there is a clear box that says these are this is what we're thinking for one seven? Here are the links. There is. Let me let me. Antoine find is faster points. than everyone. He's crazy. Already you already posted the... Yeah, Antoine did. Okay. Uh, did. Okay, so I'll focus on the second one, which is what is happening now. Roadmap page, which is here. And that one has the, the link to, uh, to that topic as well. So, and to answer Ilan, actually it's not defined. We know for sure what has been done already, and we what will be well, so which will be shipped by default because it's done. It's there. For instance, comment, and on the post for comments, I explained everything which has been done so far. Um, also, the stuff we are currently working on and will be shipped if it's done in time. And it also depends on what people do. So, for instance, what I do for sure right now is working on workflow. I did comment last week or two weeks ago. Uh, next, after workflow, I would like to take the time to work on the default theme. So this is also something which will be done. We have media processing almost done because it's been done, but we need to validate everything and integrate it. Uh, taxonomy, we said that we will take it, so I'm sure we will take the time to include it. Uh, what about the widgets so work that uh, Piotr did? S same thing, same. If we take the time to work on it, we'll integrate it. It's done. We just need to integrate it. Uh, but yeah, those things are the most probable things that we will have. Then after, we, I'm sure we'll have more stuff, but I don't know what yet. The, the um, difference in terms of, I, I, I clicked on your link, Bertrand, and somebody has to find that. And what I'm talking about is making some, when you land on the project page, um, that's very clear. Just like the 1.6 uh, release information is very clear. Okay. And maybe that's also what the listserv should be used for, frankly. Also. <laughs> Since we don't have a newsletter. <laughs> And it also depends when we want to release 1.7. We could uh, also uh, release faster and smaller updates. That's also a solution. More targeted and better. Yeah, let's see. Each, each we'll fo focus on one module and okay, boom, done, new version with this module. And yeah, sure. Problem is we, <laughs> I mean that that's going to be. I mean it, it, it's a small problem, but it is a problem. We are running out of version numbers. 
No, look at no, one code. Yeah. Closer. Oh, one, 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 seven, zero, one, seven, one, one, no. seven, seven, two. One, eight, nine, ten, one, ten, one, eleven. Umbraco is for the ten now. They were for the nine last week, oh, and there okay. is for the ten now. So they, there oh. is like every two weeks. Yeah, look at the browsers. I mean, we're at like number, I don't know, hundred thousand with twenty-three Firefox. for Chrome. Yeah, yeah, but one dot one dot ten. I mean, some people are going to be confused and think it's yes. Yes. Or we go hexadecimal. Or 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 we just decide that we've done enough good work that we're at two dot oh. No, uh, two dot will be a, a very big change. That would be you know. Two dot will be uh, MongoDB and Node. <laughs> 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 I've wanted to do that for so long. Yeah. So let's start a new community. Let's stop our chart. <laughs> and let's start node or chart. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> we don't have time to do triage. Do you know how many bugs we have? Um, too much. Too many. New bugs? Incoming bugs? The the Hibernate one, I have to check. I, I, there are new ones, yes. How many? But if you have the information already... I'm sure I can click on my link. <laughs> um, 23. Okay, well... Uh, I don't know. I, I Quick have... question, Ilan. Ilan, did you order the T-shirt? Yes, and they were and they were distributed. Oh, I, okay. Everyone, uh, I even I even sent like multiple emails to I think two people on the list because I, I was waiting for them because I, last time we talked, it was about oh, you. You told me to do it, so I did it. No, I didn't. <laughs> I just I listened like a good little soldier. Okay, but that's one of what I said. I said, send them to me. I do it. You, you even asked for my address. Yeah, I know. But this. Okay, good. Good soldier. <laughs> Brett. Camille. Are, are, are you reading the paper at us? Is are we that boring? Well, so what were we supposed to see here? Yes. Who published an article in MSDN magazine? Uh, uh, we can do triage if you want, Sebastian. It's up to you. No. Okay, so let's do it. We need to do. Way. We need to organize a bigger triage. You know. The the big triage. Yeah, the big triage. Um, when you have time. Next week. <laughs> sure. I mean, not next week. Uh, at the at this meeting next week, you and me. Okay. We have time. I will focus on the important one, the urgent bang one. Uh, any other questions that we didn't address? Um. Yeah, uh, Piotr's uh, publishable widgets. We yeah. talked about that, yes. One seven, maybe if we have the time to do it, like the taxonomy. That, that's the goal. We have this goal. But yeah. So yeah, one seven. I have the fork in some mail he sent us, or maybe it's it's um, or if Piot you can explain it on the miscellaneous thread on, on the forum board. Okay, and uh, should I just create a fork or send? I a think patch you have. A I think yes, you made a fork already. So just okay. point it to point us to it in the in the in the thread so everyone can see it, and we have uh, uh, something saved. And uh, maybe same thing for Sipco, but I think he also did it already. I think there's okay. more work that needs to be done on 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 the widgets, though. Um, so, for example, um, when you enable somebody to access widgets, they can access every single widget. There's no control over which widgets Security, are. Yeah. yeah, for role-based. Bit of a problem. Yeah, there will be some toolkits also. I I will raise. Uh, for security, we have the content item permissions, which will work with widgets, but it's, yeah, but maybe it will it won't be tested. So yeah, we can work on that too, and we also work. 
Uh, Sebastian, speaking about security, um, I was uh, I created a, a couple uh, weeks ago. I created a feature for for one of the clients, and it, they agreed to open source it. So um, it's about the item permissions, but not uh, uh, in a way that it's imp already implemented in Orchard, but more fine-grained. So you can assign users to a content item, and have uh, on the content item context. So not globally for the whole application, but you c can control uh, not so, so so you wouldn't have to, for example, create a role for each content item. Uh, what would be the fallback yeah. if we wouldn't implement it? So yeah, if you I need more fine grain control, it's uh, the role <laughs> It's already too much bulky. fine grain, I think. Yeah, yeah. It, what's missing is coarse grain, I think. Yes. Something and between the global permissions and the content item permissions. I will open a discussion with that, with the things I, uh, yes. I have in mind. Uh, the, idea, the idea would be, for example, that if I want to protect my whole blog, uh, I would be able to do that more easily than, than today. Um, but um, anytime you add users instead of roles in permission checking, I think you're, you're opening a, a huge can of worms. Uh, it becomes a lot more complicated very fast. Yeah, but uh, what about scenarios in which uh, you know the, the, the roles? So uh, you need to res you have hundreds of items, and you, you need to restrict uh, specific users to access specific content items. So you would need to create a role. That's bad. Maybe that's, that's what your customer is. is that the, your customer is asking is okay. Assigned. He has the right to ask it for you, and you have the right to do it. But that's not a core scenario. We don't want to handle that in the core scenario. Because that's a bad that's a bad design. Yeah, and we don't a, want it to. A, it is a bad design. Um, you really want roles, even if you have one person. In if that. a user doesn't have access to a content item, it's not because what he is. Because tomorrow, when he leaves, someone will take his place. And yeah. what you care about is this place. What is this place? I am the CEO. Even if there is only one, is the CEO and has yeah, the CEO. Yeah. Uh, so uh, maybe I. Uh, uh, mm, but again, so, it's okay. It's okay. Many roles. We have roles. We have roles, but roles in the context of a content item, but not in a context uh, of uh, global. Uh, yeah, we, there are still the global roles, but uh, the, what the feature adds, it's a it's an ability to assign a user to a particular role defined on the item level. Okay. So, for example, user one can be assigned to editor or content item of. Uh, because that's the, that what content types uh, there is a content type called company and users can be assigned to a particular company and in okay. all uh, items that are in a hierarchy so have a container or some container in a parent chain is this company so those users can be assigned to roles uh, so you want to local roles that, that should be that, yeah. that should be doable as a module Yes, yeah, so it's it, yeah, it can be named like this. But to do that, you have to assign users to some content item that holds those roles first. What are we talking right. about? I don't know, guys, but I gotta jump off. I've got a meeting. I'm ten minutes late too. I think we're done. Uh, so, Sebastian, I'm filing a bug for uh, requiring nested sortable instead of including it in the application. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Sortable. <laughs> and GS plump. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks everyone, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.